Hello, and welcome to Strange Stories with the Seeker and the Skeptic. Today, we're talking with Tara Kiprit. Tara describes herself as a lifelong seeker who has always looked for the science and logic behind the unexplained, something that we definitely appreciate. She had a spiritual reawakening when she discovered Dolores Cannon and her quantum healing hypnosis technique. Thank you for joining us today, Tara. We're very happy to have you. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So the first thing I wanted to say is I loved in your answers to us that you said, although you're a believer, you've had very little interaction with like the paranormal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is funny. We like early on, we interviewed Alan Greenfield, who he's kind of like a big name in ufology. Um, and he said the same thing to us. Like he is so interested. He spent his entire lifetime like researching this stuff but has had very little experiences. So he, he could commiserate with you. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, there's a part of it that feels super frustrating. And then there's a yeah. part of it that's like, well, okay, that's just not my journey this go around, you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I think what is like important to point out is that just because you haven't been experiencing things like that your entire life doesn't mean that you're not gifted or have those skills and abilities, you know, they're always there for you to develop and flex like muscles. Um, and, you know, when you start to flex them, I'll also speak from experience, you know, you do start to kind of have a little bit more of those types of experiences. So what did that look like for you? Like on your journey, kind of like starting to flex those muscles, like what, what kind of developed for you? Um, so definitely my intuition that has been a huge focus and development for me, because even though I've never really like, you know, I, I've never had psychic experiences as a child or mediumship or anything like that, as I've been getting more and more into spirituality and my, you know, connection to the universe and whatever God, um, I've always kind of known that all you need is, is already within you, right? Like we all have those abilities. We just have to learn how to tap into them. And really in the more recent years, developing my intuition and being able to trust myself and having me be the first person that I go to when I'm faced with a decision or healing or some, you know, is a, a it, very empowering for me because I was definitely one of those people that sought outside of myself, right? Asking opinions of coworkers, friends, doctors, parents, siblings, whatever, and always kind of having to filter their experiences and how does, you know, how is that affecting their advice to me? And do I want their experiences or do I want to create my own experience? You know, so it really was a, a huge, um, empowering thing to have happened to be able to learn to trust my gut and trust my heart, my visions, my, you know, myself really as a whole. Um, and so that has really opened up and then that opens up other gifts, right? So I've been practicing like connecting to higher consciousness and um, channeling like guides and things like that. So it really, it just, it starts to open up all kinds of doors for sure. <laughs> love everything that you just said um for so many reasons because I agree <laughs> with you like we do have the answers we can tap into that higher level of consciousness that we all have access to we just have to learn how to do it but just a little while ago <laughs> I received that message of I was gonna ask like okay long story short I won a book cover design, like a free one off of TikTok today. It was very exciting. And so awesome. like, I was like, oh, what should I like? I don't even have any ideas for like this book for like the, well, I mean, I have ideas for the book, but for the cover. And I was like thinking about like putting it out to people like, what, what should I do? And then I heard very clearly in my mind of, you don't need to ask anybody else. You need to go inside and you need to <laughs> ask yourself. <laughs> right. And so you literally just said that. And I mean, it, and I, as soon as I heard that in my brain, I'm like, that was absolutely true. I don't mm. need to ask anybody else. But I think that's so true for so many things. Like everybody has such different experiences and different, you know, ways of seeing the world that might 
or might not resonate with you, you know, so it's better to tune into yourself. Absolutely. I always say that's the first place to go. Sometimes yeah. you need help, right? Sometimes sure. you need to talk about that perspective. Yeah. Right. Yes, absolutely. Definitely. I'm with you. Yeah. But definitely when you can make that first place yourself, that's yep. a beautiful thing. Yeah. And, and that's what drew me to QHHT, right. And Dolores Cannon, like that's where all that, it's just, it's within you. We all have access to it. Even the most whatever you would call quote unquote normal people, right. That aren't psychics and mediums and, and spiritual advisors, like you can tap into it and it's a lot easier than you would think. Yeah. Oh, what does, uh, just for anyone who, who's not heard of this before, what does QHAT stand for? Oh, sure. Sorry. So QHHT is quantum healing hypnosis technique. So tell us all about Dolores Cannon and this technique, because I know zero, but I'm very interested. <laughs> okay, awesome. So Dolores Cannon started to do this type of work, like hypnosis. She was a hypnotherapist way back in, I want to say the 70s. I could be a little off, but in the 70s. And it was one of those things, like if anyone's familiar with Dr. Brian Weiss, like it was something that she <laughs> kind of stumbled upon, this past life regression um, and through her work, what she started to notice was not only were past life events and experiences and emotions and relationships affecting the lives that we're living now, um, but people around the world in different cultures, different religions, races, whatever, you know, whatever, were coming back with similar information that until that point was unknown. And I mean, you could even say it's still unknown, but you know, like how they built the pyramids or it, stuff about energy and crystals and just, I mean, things that would blow your mind. But, you know, when you start to say like, how are all these people coming back with the same information, it starts to make a lot of sense, right? Like how is this, whatever, 25 year old from Arkansas matching up with things that this 60 year old from China is that like, you know, mm -hmm. it, it's kind of you, you, there's a part of you that starts to trust what's coming through. Um, and so she just really dove very deep into that. And one of the things that they also found was when you connect, so in QHHT, not only do you do past life regression, but you connect to that part of you that is connected to all, right? That part that is able to access knowledge across space and time, energy, uh, instantaneous healing, all kinds of things like that. And so when you connect to that part of you, you can receive understanding about things that are going on in your life, whether they're from past lives, from childhood experiences, recent experiences, um, and really uncover what's going on and heal your body. And that is one of the main major things, again, that drew me to it. Um, because, you know, just having that awareness around what's going on is enough to start the healing process. And that's something else they found through all of those sessions that she did is that it was always a very similar thing, right? Like everyone who was experiencing diabetes, let's say, was reporting the same emotion, the same emotion attached to it. Um, everyone that had pain in their right knee was reporting having trouble taking a step or moving forward or, you know, things like that. And so it, again, it's like, how can you, when everybody across the board mm -hmm. has the same answer, it's hard to not trust it. I mean, that sounds very, that part in particular about like the physical issues sounds very familiar, um, similar to like Louise Hay, mm -hmm. you know, you can heal your life, that book where it's like, if you have this physical issue, here's the energetic and emotional route to it. And the way of kind of like reprocessing it, do you feel like there's some similarities there? Oh, for sure. Yes, yeah. absolutely. Um, Louise Hay and even Dolores's daughter, uh, Julia Cannon, she um, developed a technique called Soul Speak, which incorporated a lot of what went on in Dolores's sessions. Um, and so now we can, got, uh, again, same thing, but not with QHHT, just like a different um, modality, you know, mm -hmm. guiding people to go within 
to uncover like what is the message that the body is trying to send by experiencing these illnesses, um, ailments, aches, pains, you know, whatever it is. And, and again, it, it's even being backed up scientifically. Um, I read recently, there was like a Harvard study that came out and I might not get the numbers right. And I excuse myself, okay. you know, <laughs> um, but it was something about like uh, women who have PTSD are some ridiculous number, 50% more likely to develop like reproductive cancer, ovarian cancer, uterine cancer. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's, it's like, how can you deny that these emotions are trapped in the body and causing us sickness and illness and but the but the good news is that we can heal them right we can uncover them we can release them it's really about understanding um and sometimes just even a perspective shift can really change what you know the trajectory of of what happens yep i mean that study is very similar to the ACE study that they did i think that was back in the 90s and that's adverse childhood experiences and so they would talk to people who had had traumatic childhoods and, um, you know, kind of compared it to health issues later on in life with like taking into account factors like smoking and drinking and stuff like that. Even the people who just had the adverse childhood experiences were much more likely to develop, you know, cancer and heart disease and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I, I think there is a lot of I think there is science is starting to catch up to be able to show like there is there's direct correlations between emotional experiences and physiological experiences. Absolutely. It's about time. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm with you. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean that, that does make sense. I, I've known some people who are medical practitioners over the years who have said that they, they feel like you give yourself a better chance of, of surviving a thing in a positive way if you think it's possible if you if you and there are studies um over, over the last decade that people who think that their cancer meds are going to work have a better re response rate people who don't think their cancer meds are going to work have a worse response rate and then there's been a lot of studies uh about just placebo like if, if you you know even people who know they're being given a sugar pill, they're like, they're, they're, there are, are people doing studies saying, hey, we're going to give you a sugar pill and we hope this helps you. And they have like a slightly better chance than not. So, I mean, that tells me that there's something to it at least. Um, you know, I, I think that it's not going to fix everything, but nothing's going to fix everything. I think that in any situation, if you have any kind of chronic anything, you should still, you know, have a doctor in the mix somewhere and you should still go through those you know those scientific quotes quote scientific you know we, we don't have the best words for things sometimes but the, the the more accepted medical methods should still be pursued but i think that if you don't at least give something else a shot you are probably not giving yourself the best chance just in case anybody's listening with some chronic issues do everything, do all of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because you have to find what works for you, you know? Yeah. And I think, again, having yourself be one of the areas to kind of check in with is a huge thing. Like even speaking personally, um, I struggled for most of my life with eczema, um, chronic, and it wasn't that bad for most, you know, my whatever, I'd have a patch here, a patch there, whatever. But then in the more recent years, like I had a breakout all over my entire body and it was painful and horrific, you know, like one of probably one of the worst experiences I've ever gone through. And I went to doctors and naturopaths and, you know, they really, and I'm not saying don't go to doctors. That's not at all yeah. what I'm saying. <laughs> Um, but I did, like I tried, right. I tried the, the dermatologist wanted to give me injections. The naturopath changed my diet and also gave me like vitamin injections and all of that. And none of it worked. Um, and it, re it, it repressed it for a while, you know, and, um, 
actually just a few months ago, it came up again, very badly. Um, and this time I like let it run its course and I dove in deep and I learned and I let my emotion, you know, I, I sat with it and I sat with my emotions and, and really discovered like where this was stemming from. And it's so funny, like, and I, for a while I had been complaining to my husband and um, you know, I was like, man, I feel like my skin is on fire. Like I am burning from the inside out burning. And I just kept over and over, like I'm burning, I'm burning. I feel like I'm burning. And I think my brother might have said to me one day, he's like, why aren't you doing this stuff to yourself? <laughs> and he's like, what are you doing? Like find someone to do it for you or you do it to yourself. You know? So I did, I, I did a past life regression on myself and I saw a life where I was, uh, like a keeper of knowledge is really the only way I can describe it. Um, whether you want to call it a healer or a witch or whatever it was. Um, but it, there was me and another woman and they, you know, we, they, we were feared, right? The knowledge was feared. And so they tried to kill us and they tried to hang us, but we didn't die. And so then they burned us. And during the regression, like I could feel that throughout my entire body. Mm. Um, and I, you know, asked for understanding, asked for awareness, and then asked my higher self for help healing. Um, and they told me in that moment, they said that they could release 85% of that energy from that past life and that the rest of it would kind of continue to release over time. Um, and that was a huge turning point in the outbreak of eczema. It within a few days just started to get better and better and better. And I would say it's, I'm 95% gone. Um, and really there's like no, f a little fear, no fear mm -hmm. of it returning. Um, it feels very much like that's something that is in the past, um, mm -hmm. and not something that I need to kind of worry about or deal with moving forward. Um, and that's not the first time I addressed it either. You know what I mean? Like in all, in all yeah. honesty and reality, like I had been addressing eczema and thought that it was many different things throughout my spiritual journey, throughout my life. Um, mm -hmm. And it just so happened that at that point, like that's what needed to be uncovered. And, and like I said, there were a lot of emotions and experiences from this life that were contributing to yeah. it, but had I not sat with it and, and dove in and, and uncovered it, I'd probably still, you know, I imagine I would still be dealing with it right now. It's very interesting. And to me, that just says like, for so many of the things that we experience, like our, our challenges, our, you know, our health issues, our mental health issues, like it's not just one thing. There's so many different layers, right? And so yes. if you're just addressing the physiological layer, obviously we need to do that but you could be missing some things that are deeper roots of that. Absolutely. Yes. You know, so I, you might heal the eczema for a little while with medicine, right? Mm -hmm. And then it keeps coming back. Yeah. That's right. Yes. I, yeah, I agree. Everything is layers. It's just mm -hmm. peeling back the onion. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so tell us what does a QHHT like session look like? Like what is walk us through like what that would be. Yeah, absolutely. So um, QHHT sessions typically last about five hours, just depending wow. on the person. Yeah. Okay. It's a really um, in-depth, deep regression type of work. So we start with like what we call an interview. So where I'm just talking to my client, you know, for a few hours, sometimes it just kind of depends about their life what they've been through, what brings them to this point, what they're looking to understand, move forward from, heal, release, you know, whatever, cure, even curiosity, whatever it looks like for them. And then we move into the hypnosis and the hypnosis itself is divided into two portions. So the first portion is what we refer to as the past life regression. And I just encourage everyone, like, just be open because you never know what you're going to see. Um, you can see memories of this life, a past life, a future life, an in-between place, extraterrestrial type memories, fantastical type memories, ancestral. You know, it, it really just depends on what's most appropriate for you in that moment. Um, the higher self the soul, 
the divine really guides the session. Um, so I just encourage like, just be open, you know? Um, and then even if I always say like, you don't even really need to believe in past lives because you can just be shown a story that your mind needs to see unfold in order to have a better understanding of something or move forward from something. Um, it's really about allowing whatever comes through to, to just come through. And, and I encourage people to allow their imagination to go because I believe that our imagination is what connects us to these higher levels of consciousness, dimensions, realms, you know, whatever you want to say. Um, and so after the past life portion, then we connect to the individual's higher self. Um, and that's where the magic happens. That's where we ask for understanding, for healing, for, uh, you know, again, curiosity questions, why they showed them the life that they showed, questions about their relationships, their life, um, really anything. The The mind is the only limitation in what can be asked and answered in a session. And then, and then that's it. And then I, <laughs> it's all recorded. And then I, I count them out, wake them up, and we talk about what they saw. And so it's pretty interesting, like people tend to have like an in-between type of experience, right? It, when Dolores first started doing this 40 years ago, um, most people went completely out, like completely unconscious. They would wake up an hour and a half later and there's an hour, and, you know, of a half, bleh, excuse me, an hour and a half of tape. And they're like, what happened? <laughs> and okay. now as we've been ascending and evolving as a species, they're finding that we are more aware for things that we were never aware for before. So we're aware for like certain types of meditation, states of trance, hypnosis. Um, and so people feel, they feel aware when they're having the experience. They're like, yeah, I know what's going on. You know, I know what I'm saying, what you're saying. And then they come out of the hypnosis and I ask what they remember. And they're just like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like a dream. It starts mm -hmm. to fade so fast as soon as you uh, come out of it. It's so interesting. Yeah, it's super interesting. Do you feel like past life is the right terminology? No. Okay. <laughs> Neither. <laughs> so I want you to tell us why why you feel like maybe that's kind of not exactly the right terminology. I think it's the best terminology that we have right now because we experience time in a linear fashion. Um, I don't think that time is linear. So it's really like everything that has ever happened is happening right now. <laughs> so, you know, um, that's why people have like those, sometimes they experience those weird overlaps, right? Well, they'll, they'll experience a past life, but it's almost like, but I was like, I was already alive, mm -hmm. you know, when this was happening. So how it's because your consciousness at, is my experience and belief is that your consciousness is split into, I mean, a million different pieces, right? Mm -hmm. We're all connected. We're all one. So every part of my consciousness is experiencing something different. Um, and it's a matter of just being able to tap into it. So I really think that it's, it's all just happening right now yeah that's a hard kind of concept to explain it, it is but I I mean I think you're right that's that's how I understand it as well in a way of not really understanding it but right. <laughs> um I, I think I've been shifting my language to more of like alternate lifetimes yeah right so it's like alternate it's something different than what I'm experiencing right now but like it's still happening right now <laughs> Mm -hmm, <laughs> somewhere mm -hmm. in the quantum timeline somewhere right um how often would you say like in the sessions that you do with people that what they're the alternate lifetime that they're experiencing is from a, a world that is similar to ours versus like a different realm a different universe Ooh, um, I would say most, most people, maybe like if I had to put a number on it, 70%, 65, 70%, 
um, are experiencing past lives that are of an earthly type of experience. Um, But it really just depends on the individual because even even the people that experience earthly lives, that doesn't mean that they haven't had other types of lives. Mm -hmm. That just means that what they're experiencing right now is best explained and understood or a direct reflection of another earthly life that they've had, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Um, Because for a long time, even for myself, like I experienced life after life of just earthly things. And we call them like potato picking lives <laughs> because if you're just trying to get through the day, right? Like just like us now, most of us are not famous. We don't have our names on front pages of newspapers. Like we're just trying to get through the day. And that's what a lot of people see. But there's so much correlation to what they experience then, the patterns that they experience then. And it's like, did they learn or are they kind of repeating it now? Is that energy kind of still stuck with them? Are they calling it in? Do they need to relearn the lesson or or whatever? Um, but like I experienced a lot of earthly type lives. And then all of a sudden they just started showing me like these fantastical lives. And I was kind of, you know, blown away. I was like, oh, so I did have, you know, even though like I saw so many earthly lives, like there is that part of you that, I mean, you're, we're, we're infinite. There's no, um, con- constraints to our energy. Mm-hmm. What are some of those fantastical lives you've seen? <laughs> oh, <laughs> um, so I think the first fantastical life that I saw for myself, I was what I can only describe as like a forest, uh, troll or nymph or something like I (laughs) can't even I don't know the name of what they were but I looked like those little troll dolls with the crazy hair you know (laughs) and um there were uh, and we were tiny and we kind of looked over the forest took care of the forest um but what was really awesome was so we all had our own like color like I was red um and then there was like a white one and a blue one and a green one you know like that Um, and I would spread seeds and I spread the seeds on the backs of dragons. And like, so I had a dragon and I, uh, it actually showed me that that dragon was a, a dog that I had in this life, Mm -hmm. um, that I had a super strong connection with. Mm -hmm. Um, so that was very cool (laughs) to see that, um, you know, and other lives as like, just a, a I, what I would only be able to describe as a, a being like an extraterrestrial type mm-hmm. being. Um, and I saw the point where I stopped eating food and went to like liquid or plasma or, you know, some kind of opalescent type of drink. Um, so it was showing me like the ascension of that, like no longer being bound to having to eat and kind of evolving past that. So that was really cool. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That was cool. (laughs) Very, very cool. Yeah. And they all correlated, even if it didn't make so much sense in the Mm -hmm. moment, right? It, as you look back and kind of let it unfold and and re-examine months, years later, you're like, oh, I get it. Like, I see why they showed me that at that point. What would you say are some of like the lessons you've you've learned about just these past lives and karma in general? Like what like why is this so important for people to kind of like explore and and learn about? I think it's important to explore and learn about because these energies are affecting us. At least that's what my work has shown me mm-hmm. that even if you don't even think about it. Like there's stuff that's going on that, and there's a reason that you're going through it. Just like when you look back at the life you're living now, your experiences add up and they make you the person that you are. And the experiences don't just stop in this lifetime. They extend to all lifetimes. So it's like a cumulative of all those experiences. And, um, you know, 
the lives that people see, they, they didn't always learn the lesson to put themselves first, right. To not let whatever society or parental or family like things control them. Um, and so they're trying to learn it now. Um, even just for whatever reason, one is sticking out like the, this energy of waiting, right. Waiting for someone, something to be whole or complete or happy when that energy is available to you at any time, you know, you just have to choose it. Um, and so it's just like the traumas and experiences of this life. Like we hold that energy and unless we deal with it, it's affecting us on some level, right? It might not be a conscious level, um, but certainly an energetic level. And people have had all kinds of experiences, like, especially with our health. Um, I've had people struggle with like a one woman came, um, she had pain from head to toe. I, I think she was technically diagnosed with fibromyalgia. Um, and she was shown a past life where she was kind of in like living in a, in a community or village, like in the woods, like, you know, living off the land and things like that. And she, for whatever reason, I don't remember went off on her own in search of something. And she got crushed by a pile of rocks and she eventually passed, but she had been there for a few days um, mm -hmm. in that agony, in that pain, feeling that regret for going out on her own, you know, feeling all of those feelings. And she carried that with her. And I'm going to be honest, sometimes, I'm not sure why we carry energy like that sometimes, you know, <laughs> like Sometimes I think it's to steer us in a certain direction so that we either don't make the same mistakes again. Um, you know, it, a lot of times we say it that we want to remember so that we can learn differently and, and behave differently this time. Um, but again, just uncovering where that energy comes from and understanding why you've carried it forward is enough a lot of times for the higher self to release it so that, you know, you don't have to continue experiencing that discomfort and that pain. Um, and that goes along with that. another one that comes to mind is um, I had a woman that had very uh, struggled her entire life with her weight, whole, you know, feeling like no matter what she did, exercise, dieting, eating, like it didn't matter. It just, she held extra weight. And in the regression, she was shown life after life after life of different types of starvation, mm -hmm. like being, um, I can only think of the word Eskimo, you know, some kind of native and starving to death because they couldn't find food, being a farmer and having the land kind of die off and needing to constantly be moving and, and searching for food and not having enough food. Um, and one of them was even a life where she was a young girl and I believe it was like a stepfather who would kind of hold dinner over her head and wouldn't let her eat if she didn't behave appropriately, you know? So they showed her all of these lives and they explained that her body on a cellular level is holding extra weight because it doesn't know that that's over, you know, it doesn't know that yeah. that experience is over. It remembers. Um, and so it, it was that it was like, we, we can't let go because we don't know when the food is coming again. So we're going to store it as much as we can. Um, yeah. So it's super interesting to see how these things affect us and how we do hold the energy of those experiences and also how easy it is to let it go. You know, you, you said about karma. I mean, I've had people come in and like, it's really just about the awareness of it because having a right, even just now, like when you become aware of something, it immediately starts to change mm -hmm. and your experience of it is different. And you're like, oh, okay, now I know I'm doing that and I can either continue yeah. doing it or not, you know? <laughs> so it really, um, it's just fascinating how, how much we carry, but also I would say how easy it, I think that's the key also to remember is that, yeah, we might be carrying it, but it's easier than we think to release ourselves of it. Yep. I mean, with what you were just saying, like, it reminds me of 
Bessel van der Kolk's work, The Body Keeps Score. And so that's all about trauma and how the body keeps track of trauma, holds it in the cells. But it's like, this is taking it the next step, the next layer where it's not just the body. It's not just the cells that's storing it. It's like your whole energy field Mm -hmm. is storing it and it's keeping score. Absolutely. And trying to keep you safe. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's not fighting against you. It's trying to keep you safe. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I, um, I've done some past life work or alternate life work myself in the Akashic records and that story that you just shared about that woman holding excess weight. I had a lifetime as a little boy where I starved to death in this lifetime. I have struggled with holding on to excess weight. And so I'm very aware of it. Um, but there's still energetic layers that need healing. So I definitely, you know, resonate a lot with the stories that you're sharing and the work that you're doing. Oh, yeah. It's, I know it's really, I, I'm so, I feel so blessed to be able to kind of carry on Dolores's legacy and just keep developing it and, and sharing it with people, Mm -hmm. you know? Uh, Anytime someone talks about this kind of stuff, it kind of reminds me of, um, well, the the Alan Watts, who's a a, kind of a beat poet guy, um, said you are the universe experiencing yourself, itself. And if you assume something like a soul defining that however you want to uh and if he's right about that then why would recycling not happen and so you know it, i don't think it's a big stretch to to get to to that and we know through psychology that food scarcity as a child can cause you to have because we're going on that that theme food scarcity as a child can cause you to have weight problems as an adult and so if there is such a thing as a soul and they do get recycled it would not be too much of a stress a stretch i think to to presume that that same type of thing can happen across those barriers especially if we are in fact the universe experience in itself because it would be something that would probably continue over time. So I don't think that that's a massive stretch given those parameters. Um, just something I'm, I'm curious about, something in um, the, the questionnaire you were trying to us, you, you, you said that you have witnessed uh, multiple accounts of instantaneous physical healing. That would imply kind of plural. What, what types of things have you seen that with? Yeah. So I would say what I can visually like, uh, you know, be aware of are people with chronic pain. Um, Just recently, I had a man come in and he said he experienced like psoriatic arthritis from head to toe um, and psoriasis and a few, maybe like allergies and you know, blood pressure. I'm not, I I don't remember all of it, but definitely the psoriatic arthritis. And he said, one of the things that he wanted to be able to do most was play basketball with his sons. And so we did the session, you know, he, I don't even remember exactly what, oh, I do remember, but his past lives, he experienced his past lives, his higher self, they cleared the arthritis. Um, and when he, like came out of the hypnosis he was literally walking around my my room doing squats like Ugh. without having to hold on to anything you know and, and he was like I can't believe it I I can't believe it and just able to move with the a freedom that he did not have when he entered that room um and so those are the types of healings that I can like visually perceive right when people come in all stiff and they leave like just with this free feeling. Um, even one of my neighbors, so across the street from my house, there's like a farm stand. And just the other day he said to me, he goes, I remember one woman, she could barely walk going into your house. And when she came out, she walked over and picked up a watermelon and carried it back over to her <laughs> car. <laughs> so, you know, those kinds of things like I can visually experience, but even the things that I can't experience, it's obviously would then be hard for me to kind of say, this is what happened. But, Mm -hmm. you know, 
I'm going off what the higher self is telling me is happening in that moment. Um, people do tend to, I've had people purge after the session, like before leaving my house, like, you know, needing to kind of, um, physically purge, um, bodies trembling because there's so much energy flowing through them. Um, people coming in wearing glasses, leaving without glasses, you know? So yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. It's amazing to witness those kinds of transformations and not uncommon. Yeah. So it's very deep, deep healing that happens. I mean, five hours is a long time, but like still <laughs> in the grand yeah. scheme of things, that's a quick amount of time to heal these issues that people have probably been dealing with for years or yeah. lifetimes or lifetimes. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. So in a session, are you, I just want to make sure, like, I kind of understand it. Like, are you sure. communicating with their higher self? Oh, absolutely. You are. Okay. Yes. I'm speaking directly to the higher self. Um, okay. Sometimes the conscious mind can kind of like wedge its way in, yeah. um, but I'm aware if that were to happen and I ask it very lovingly to please step aside, you know, so that we okay. can continue um, the work. And some people are a little more um, combative <laughs> than mm -hmm. others. Um, but, you know, I would say 90 six percent of the time I'm fully able to have the conscious mind step aside and just um and the conscious mind and the higher self work together a lot because yeah we question you know we question ourselves but a lot of times we know we know mm -hmm. what needs to happen we know the changes we need to make we just either don't like it don't want to hear yeah. it you know <laughs> <laughs> so the higher self is very willing to have the conscious mind kind of come in and chime in and work with the person as well. So is the higher self speaking through the person or are you like internally talking to the higher self? Oh no, the higher, I mean. yes, I do. No, the higher self is speaking through the person. The person. Okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's cool because you can, I know that I probably don't notice it as often as it happens because I don't know them that well, mm -hmm. but you can tell there's a change in the voice. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, sometimes it's like softer or, um, I mean, I've had inner childs come through and they mm -hmm. sound and, and it's like a, a 50 year old woman sounds like she's, you know, five again, yeah. like it's, it's just so fascinating that, and people don't know that, you know, <laughs> like they don't know that that's what happened. <laughs> um, and they're certainly not doing it for my benefit, you know? Um, but it is very cool that you can, especially the person, when you go back and listen, you can hear the difference in your daily talking voice mm -hmm. and the voice that's coming through on the tape. Very cool. What drew you to this work? How how did that start for you? So it's so funny. I was going through my, what I'll call a reawakening, because I've always been very spiritual into, you know, tarot cards and crystals and candles and witchcraft and things like that. Um, but I was going through a, a reawakening and my mom was actually kind of on a parallel journey. Um, and one day she just came downstairs and she was like, Tara, you got to listen to this lady on YouTube, you know, Dolores Cannon. And she shared a video with me and I just like listened and it was just so fascinating. So I just kept listening and kept listening. And like I said, when I understood how she gathered all this information, it was like that ping of like, see, it's all within you. It's all already within you. You have this ability, you have this knowledge, you just need to learn how to tap into it. Um, and I, so I eventually sought out my own session, my own QHHT session, and that was beyond life-changing, um, definitely sent me off. I, I did like a total 180 in my life. I, I was not prepared. <laughs> I was not at all prepared for the turmoil uh, that surfaced in my life, but it was all looking back exactly what I needed. You know, it was probably one of the most difficult things I've ever had to do in my life, but I would never be where I am 
today without that. Um, and, and even I think in my session, I asked like, what is my purpose here? What am I meant to be doing? Um, which is like the number one question that people ask in sessions. Um, and they said, I, I forget the wording, but it was like communication. And I believe they even said this. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know what that meant. Like, I didn't pick up on this meant QHHT, <laughs> like, yeah. um, you know, and they were talking about consciousness and, and channeling consciousness. And so it was very interesting. Um, and it just after I had that experience, and I did have one of those experiences where like energy was surging through my body, I felt like I was vibrating the entire time. Um and I just felt called to be able to bring this to people. I'm like, we need to know that we have this ability. We can access all of this. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about QHHT, aside from the healing and the uncovering and the releasing is like, it begins or strengthens, if you've already begun it, that conversation with your higher self, with your intuition, right? What does that sound like? What does that feel like in my body when I get that understanding and that message? You know, do I feel it in the back of my head? Do I feel it in my heart? Like, what does it sound like? You know, um, so it's, I also feel like it's the beginning of starting that conversation mm -hmm. and turning within for the answers. I think that part's really important for people because it can be difficult to discern like what is higher consciousness versus my parts coming through or, you know, my ego, but, and a lot of times your higher self is the quietest voice in the room. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're not listening, yeah. that's right. So subtle, right? Yeah. So subtle nudges feelings mm -hmm. whispers yeah yeah for sure I always say I think the one um tip if I can that that I would give people when trying to discern your higher self from your conscious mind is your higher self is is loving mm -hmm. and it is not negative or nasty or belittling right even if it doesn't want you to do something it's not gonna say it like no don't do that yeah <laughs> you know it'll be like maybe you should try this instead yeah. you know <laughs> yeah <laughs> and I'll say that that for me was the first step in trying to differentiate what is my higher self what is my intuition versus my kind of conscious monkey chatter mind yep I agree with you there. I, I always tell people, yeah, you may not like what your higher self has to say, but it will always be very kind about it. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> and oftentimes a little direct. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all need that sometimes. Oh, yes, absolutely. <laughs> and I will say like what comes through in sessions is always meant for the person's highest good, mm -hmm. right? It, like you said, sometimes the truth can be uncomfortable. Um, we might not want to hear it or look at it or see it. Um, but that doesn't mean that it's not the best thing for us to understand in that moment to be able to move forward. That's so. true in any context. There's lots of times that, you know, the, the, the reality of a situation will help you, but it's not always going to be what you want to hear. Definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> I would point something out uh, from from the beginning of this conversation. You you had kind of said that you don't feel like you really had a, a lot in the way of uh, experiences in you know the realm of par paranormal stuff. But I would I would say that the initiatory experience that you just described would should be counted as as that. Um, I, I think that you know. It's it's easy, and and I say this also for for the people who are listening who think, man, it'd be nice if if I you know could experience some some kind of weird thing. It doesn't have to be Bigfoot eating out of your trash for it to be a, a thing that has happened. Um, and and I I I I think that going you, you go back to to Jung and synchronicity, like the synchronicities are are part of the whole thing, and and we dismiss stuff. Most of what is kind of you know quote paranormal for lack of a better term is stuff that 
can easily be dismissed by someone not experiencing it as being a mundane thing. What makes it that way is is how you experience it as a person, not what other people are going to think of it. And I think that it is easy to dismiss that sometimes. So I think it's important to say that out loud sometimes. Absolutely. I agree 100%. And it's so funny, like after I say that and then I start to think about it, you're like, yeah. like oh, okay. And you're right. Like I, I've never had Bigfoot eating out of my garbage, <laughs> but you know, and I'm, I'm certainly not someone that on a daily basis, like, like I said, was talking to ghosts or anything like yeah. that. But if you're just a little bit open to it, right, it, it does start to kind of come in a lot more um, and play games with it. Like, ask, right? Ask for a sign, ask for a synchronicity, close your eyes and ask your intuition, like show me, you know, something to look for. And whether you see like a silver butterfly or, you know, three, three, three or whatever, and see how long it takes for it to kind of come up in your day to day. And you'll be surprised. You'll definitely be surprised. I think we're all attuned to different frequencies. Like I channel higher consciousness my higher self angels all of that I never connect with somebody who's passed on you know what I mean but there's right. people out there where that's what their frequency is attuned to it's to you know to people who have lived an earthly experience and you know I think that might be true for you too like that you're you're just attuned to a different frequency and so that your experience is in a different dimension <laughs> right <laughs> Right. And I think it's awesome to have these types of conversations because I think most of us, when we think about it, right, we do think of the the earthly mm-hmm. mediums and or even like aliens coming down in my yeah. backyard or whatever, you know, taking mm-hmm. me here. Like those are the kinds of things we think of. And it's so much more. Mm-hmm. There's so much more to it. It's so much more expansive than we even realize. Yep. And it is really all around us. Yes. Just have to tap into it. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. So if time is always happening, like it's all happening at the same time, the healing that you're doing in these sessions, is it affecting that lifetime as well? I believe so. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, even it like, because I look at it as in this lifetime, right. When you can go back and give, love to that inner child that maybe was missing it then or the attention or the validation or you know whatever it is it literally changes how you feel now Mm -hmm. and so yeah I absolutely believe that when we go back and we examine those lives and release that energy that it's being released on all levels Um, I don't think that it's just happening like in our reality I think yeah again that would be a very linear thing Mm -hmm. to have happen. And I don't think it's like that. So yes, I absolutely believe that you are on some level healing um, that past version of yourself or that alternate version of yourself. Awesome. I love it. Very interesting. (laughs) (laughs) I know. I'm glad you brought that up because I was thinking that when we, when we were talking about it and then we just got off on something else. (laughs) So I'm glad you brought that back around. (laughs) Yeah. There's just so much to explore and it's just all good stuff. And I think could be helpful, helpful for a lot of people. Mm -hmm. So tell us about your services. Obviously you do the QHHT sessions. Um, So just tell us a little bit about like what you have to offer and where people can find you. Yeah, sure. So I do the QHHT. Those are in-person only. Um, So if you're local, I'm in South Carolina. So I get clients from South Carolina, North Carolina, um, and Georgia. Um, But I also offer online services. So quantum healing, past life regression, um, soul speak, really, again, just trying to guide people to go within, to to learn and Mm -hmm. uncover and kind of get used to that. Um, And so my website is cosmicqhht.com. My email is tara at cosmicqhht.com. And you can find me on Instagram, YouTube, uh, TikTok um, under Tara QHHT. So I'm, you know, and I'm, I'm open. If people have questions, I would be more than happy to talk 
help explain, you know, see what would be the right type of session for them. Um, or even if they just want to pick my brain, like I'm open to it. Awesome. <laughs> I'm here to help, here to help. Awesome. <laughs> and you had mentioned you have some kind of container that's starting in August. What's that? Yes. So it actually got pushed back a little bit. Um, so it, I'm hoping to um, launch it by the end of the year. But um, so what it is, is a really in-depth look at your life on all different levels, right? So it's a, a combination of past life regression, quantum healing, um, soul speak, which is again, tuning into the body and uncovering the physical ailments, um, learning how to interact with your energy centers and your chakras and open them and cleanse them. Um, and I would say the main thing is that after what it's meant to do is to get you comfortable with tuning into yourself, right? And again, have you be that that first line of defense, if you will, um, you know, and there's um, group Zooms involved to build community. Um, there's one-on-one -on -one, like impact sessions to really help you process because these things can bring up emotion, you know, and yeah. I totally understand that people may need help dealing with that. So, you know, I'm available to help them kind of uncover, like, how, how am I going to navigate this right now that we've brought all this stuff up to the surface? Like, how do I navigate this in my daily life? So it's really an all encompassing um, deep dive into your life. And in it's meant to really connect you with yourself and then progress you forward. We will definitely put all of your links in the show notes. Thank you. Yeah, no problem. Yes, I have loved this conversation. I appreciate you taking the time to talk to us. It has been awesome. Oh, I appreciate you guys so much for having me on. It was so good. <laughs> I love talking about it, love sharing it. So Absolutely. thank you. And I appreciate you. Yeah, we appreciate you too. <laughs> thank you so much for being here. 